Hi, in this video I will show you how to create a necklace using a bone pendant and beads. I will use black and white beads, for example this is lava stone. And um, I'll also use some black and white wooden beads and also uh, beads in other shapes. As I said, this um, necklace will be black and white and therefore it can be combined with any um, colors on the clothing. In order to make the necklace, I will use a double thread, like this. And um, the length of the necklace itself will be about 36 and a half centimeters to 37 centimeters. That would be about 14, 14 and a half inches. In order to be able to create the knots and put the beads on a needle, uh, I will add a few more inches, one or two or maximum three inches of thread uh, to my two threads. Uh, and this way um, I will have enough thread to create knots and to um, hold the necklace when I uh, add the beads. So now let's talk about the findings that we shall use and the tools. First of all let's talk about the tools. So I have here some of the tools that I will be using. Uh, for the thread, I will use a pair of scissors and a lighter. Um, and for the metal findings, um, I will use a pair of chain nose pliers, a jump ring opener. Um, I can also use, if necessary, uh, another pair of pliers to open and to close the jump rings and um, I can use for the um, crimps I can use the crimping pliers or the chain nose pliers. Um, in order to combine all those beads and attach the pendant I will need some findings too and let's talk about the findings now. Let's begin with the closure of the uh, necklace. To close the necklace and to open and close the necklace I will use this S clasp and some jump rings. For the end of the necklace, I will use these uh, bead ends. And some crimps. And now, let's begin <coughs> making the necklace. Um, unlike in the case of other necklaces, um, with this necklace I will use two th uh, threads um, because I have these pointed beads these canine shaped beads which have two orifices so I will use two threads for my entire necklace I will take the two threads and I will put them through my pendant, my bone pendant. 
I will use the big eye beading needle. So this is the needle that we need. I will put the two threads through the needle. So I just open the needle like this, put the two threads through the needle. And I will put the needle through this orifice of the of the uh, pendant and now I will find the middle of my pendant first of all let's put the four yarns through the needle I will take one of those crimps so let's take one of the crimps and I will put with the needle I will put the crimp on my needle like this this way and I have brought the crimp over here and now I will find the middle of my two uh, of my two threads this way and I will press on the crimp now I will take the yarns and make an overhand knot above the crimp I will pull on each of the threads like this and now that I have made a knot above the crimp I will take the threads put them on the needle and I will take one of those beads, put it also on the needle and I'll put it on the threads and I bring it down here and this way the bead covers the crimp and the knot now I can remove the needle And now I will separate the thread in two threads and I will start adding the beads on each of the two threads. So I put the thread on my needle and I will start adding beads.
So I added the first two beads. Now I will put one of those white beads. A lava stone bead. A teardrop shaped lava stone bead. Another white bead. Two black beads. And now I will put the first um, tooth shaped uh, bead with two orifices. I will put one thread through one of the holes and the second thread through the other. like this. And now I will continue adding the wooden beads. Again I put the thread on my needle and I will continue adding those beads. I'll put some white beads too, a white, a black and a white bead. Like this. Again some black beads. some more black and white beads the rest of the black beads. Like this. So now we have finished one half of the necklace. The next step will be to add the bead end. So 
So I will again put the threads on the needle and put the bead end on the needle too, like this. In order to uh, block the thread and to stop the beads from sliding out from the thread, I will use one of those crimps. And I will put the crimp but on a single thread, not on both threads. So I will put the thread through the needle and I will put the crimp on only one of the two threads. Like this. So as you can see here, I have the bead end and the crimp is here. Now, I will make sure that the beads are not too close to each other, but also not too far to each other, because if they are too far from each other, the thread will be visible. If they are too compressed like this, they will look rigid. So we want them to be neither too close nor too far from each other. So uh, we can just lift the beads, hang the beads like this, so that they order themselves one over the other. And now I will take the two threads and make a few knots, making sure that in between the two knots we will have our crimp. So I'll make one knot, another knot, a third knot perhaps a fourth knot and these knots as you can see here they hold the crimp in place and this way our beads will not fall off the thread. Now, I will take the scissors, cut the thread, And I will burn the end of the thread. Like this. So as you can see, I burned the end of the thread that I cut. And now I can take the pliers and close the bead. The bead end. Like this. And now I will take one of those jump rings, I will take the pliers, the chain nose pliers and the jump ring opener and I will open this jump ring
I will put the jump ring on the S clasp. And I will put it on the bead end. And now I will close the jump ring like this. And I have attached the S clasp. And as you can see, half of our necklace is ready. All we have to do is create the second half of the necklace, which must look symmetrical to the first. So I will take the other two threads, put the threads on the needle, the next beads in a symmetrical way. Now I have reached the pointed bead and again I will separate the two I will separate the two threads and I will put one thread through each of the holes of the bead. And now let's continue with both threads being put on the needle because all the other beads are wooden beads.
And now the beads have been added to the thread. Now I will put the bead uh, end. Now I will put the bead on the thread. I will remove one thread. Then I will take the crimp, put the crimp on only one of the two threads. This way. Now I can remove the needle. And again, let's see from a closer distance. Again, we have the B, the crimp on one of the threads, the bead end here, and the two threads. Now I will make, I will use the two threads to make a knot. Before that, I will lift the uh, thread so that the beads arrange themselves alone on the thread so that they are not too tight to each other, too compressed, nor too loose, so that they uh, are not too rigid, nor that we can see the thread. And now I will make a few knots here. And those knots will be masked by our bead end. Now that I have made a few knots, I will cut the thread. Like this. I will put the two threads away. I will take the lighter and burn the end of the thread. Like this. I will take the pliers, close the bead end. this way and I will put the second jump ring on the bead end. So I will open it again with the pliers and the jump ring opener and put it on the bead end here. This way.
like this. And now I will close the necklace and let's see what the finish, finished necklace looks like. So this is the finished necklace. We have the wooden beads, the S clasp as a closure, the lava stone beads in the shape of a teardrop and the bone pendant. So I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching. I will show you how to create a necklace using metal charms and pendants. I will use this metal pendant, these metal charms in the shape of feathers and black and white beads. So these are six millimeters, six millimeter um, beads. They are wooden beads. So this is the natural color of wood and these are painted in black. To make the necklace I will also need some thread and I have chosen this black nylon thread. As a closure I have chosen this ornamental closure. And in order to assemble <coughs> these parts, I will need some findings. For the end of the necklace, I will use these bead ends, bead tips. I will need some crimps. And some jump rings. And beside the jump rings, uh, uh, the findings, um, in order to make a necklace, we need uh, tools. I will talk a bit about the tools that we shall use. So, as you can see here, we have different types of pliers. Uh, the type of plier pliers that we use the most often with jewelry is this type of plier which is pointed here and has no teeth here uh, and it is called the um, chain nose pliers so these pliers are called the chain nose pliers they are flat here without teeth so that they do not scratch the findings um, here I have another type of pliers that I might use in case I want to open and close, for example, the jump rings. Also for the jump rings, I need this jump ring opener. Uh, for the crimps, I might use either the crimping pliers or the chain nose pliers. To measure the length of the necklace, I will use the measuring tape. As you can see, it is in centimeters and in inches. And for the thread, I will need the uh, scissors and the lighter. And in order to put the beads on the thread, I will use the big eye beading needle. So let's remove the needle from the package. And now, 
let's talk about the length of the of the necklace. For a normal necklace around the neck for a woman, I usually um, choose a necklace of about 36 centimeters, that would be about 14 inches. If you want to make a necklace around the neck, but for men, you can add one and a half or two inches, that would be between 40 and 42 uh, centimeters long for men. So for women, it's 36 centimeters that is 14 inches and for men you can make it 40 to 42 centimeters that would be 16 or 17 inches of course whenever you create a necklace for somebody you know you should measure exactly the length that the person prefers for the necklace and now let's begin with the with making creating the necklace uh, we shall take the <coughs> thread and as the first step I will make a few knots So I will make these knots at the end of my thread so that the thread, the beads do not fall off the thread. Like this. this way now as, as you can see I have let's see from a closer distance I have this let's move the beads and the findings away so that we can see what we are doing like this we have the end of the thread here so I can cut a little bit of this end of the thread here and with the lighter I will burn the end of the thread and by burning the nylon thread it will melt and stick to the knot so that it will the knot will be more resistant and now let's put <coughs> the thread on the needle when you put a thread on the needle you should remember that the thread the needle may be a little sharp on the inside here and it might cut a bit of the thread so whenever you choose uh, some thread you should make sure that you add three or, or three and a half inches uh, as length to the length of the necklace that you want so if you have a necklace of 14 inches so the entire necklace should be not not longer than 14 inches then you can add three inches or three and a half inches to the thread so that you can make the knots at the end of the thread uh, and also cut a bit of the thread because as I told you the place where the um, thread goes through the needle the, need the thread may be uh, cut a little bit because the needle is sharp inside here so you should be able to cut off the damaged part of the thread, the part that is damaged by the needle. And now I will take one of those crimps so I have taken two crimps and uh, I will put one of the crimps on my needle this way And 
that I'll bring. And the crimp should stop at the point where the where the knot is. And here I'm going to press on the crimp. This way. And as you can see, our uh, crimp is now flat, so it will not slip over the knot, and it also blocked <coughs> the thread, and it will not move up and down on the thread anymore. Now, I will take one of those bead end caps and put it on our needle this way and you will see that because of the crimp and the knot the thread will stop like this and it will not come out through the orifice of the bead cap and now let's close the bead end this bead end with the pliers so that the knot and the crimp are no longer visible. So this bead at the end of my necklace is masking the knot at the end of the thread. And now let's take one of those jump rings So I will take this jump ring, grab it with the pliers, with the chinos pliers, and with the with the jump ring opener and the chinos pliers, I have opened the jump ring and I will put it through my bead end. Now I will also put the closure, the clasp inside the jump ring and now we can close the jump ring. So I can use either the jump ring opener or the other pair of pliers to close the jump ring. And now as you can see the end of our necklace is finished. And now we can start putting the beads on our thread and creating the necklace. So I will begin with the white beads and I will alternate black and white beads. So I put three 
white beads So three white beads, a black bead, three white beads, a black bead. And I will continue until I reach the middle. I get closer, closer to the middle of the necklace. And now I will start adding the uh, metal pendants. I will put the small feather pendant. Now I will put a black, a white and a black, so two white beads and a black bead. I will put the next feather pendant, the larger feather pendant, again a white bead, a black bead and another white bead. I'll put one more white bead and now I have reached the middle of the pendant and I will put the half moon ornament, the half moon pendant. I will put two white beads, one black bead and 
find another white bead. This way. So what we have to take into consideration is that our beads and pendants must be placed symmetrically. I'll put the second pendant again a white a black and a white bead The last pendant, the small metal pendant. Like this. So we have finished the ornamental part with the pendants and with the um, metal charms. And we can continue adding beads by following the rule of the beads from this point to this point. So I will add three white beads, then a black bead, and so on. Like this. And now we have finished adding the beads. And all we have to do now is close the necklace. In order to close the necklace, I will take the bead end and I will open it because we shall have to work inside of this bead end to create the knot at the end of our bead. So I put the bead on my needle and on the thread and I will take the second crimp put it on the needle bring it inside the thread now I will remove the needle and as you can see let's see from a closer distance now Like this. As you can see, now we have the bead end on our thread and the crimp. Uh, the crimp must be um, made flat by using the pliers so that it will block the beads from 
coming out on this thread like this. Uh, when you decide where the crimp should be placed, you must take into consideration that the beads should not be too tight together, too compressed like this, because as you can see, if they are too compressed, they are the necklace is too rigid and it doesn't look good. The beads will not look nice. They will look somewhat like this. So some of them go uh, up, some of them go down if they are too compressed. If they are too loose, as you can see, the thread is visible. So when you decide where to put the crimp, you should take into consideration that the beads should not be too tight to one another, nor too loose. So you can leave about one millimeter of space on the thread and then press on the crimp. This way your beads have a little bit of space to move. Now I have pressed on my crimp and the crimp is pressing on the thread so that the beads will not come out. In order to make sure that this crimp does not move, you can also add a few knots above the crimp here at this point. So let's make a few knots here. So as you can see, the longer the thread is here, the easier it will be to create these knots. So it is always important to leave a few inches on the thread so that you can make these final knots on our on the thread of our necklace. So I made one knot, let's make another knot. So as you can see I opened the bead cap so that I can make these knots here. That I have space, enough space to make the knots here. And now that I made some knots here, I will take the scissors, cut the thread and I will burn the end of the thread this way. And now I can close the bead end. So now I've closed the bead end with the pliers. I will take the last jump ring I will open it I will put the jump ring through the bead end like this.
and I will put the and now I will put the clasp and close the jump ring. This way. And now let's see what our finished necklace looks like. So this is the finished necklace. So as you can see I put uh, four beads between the pendant and the feather charm because the pendant is a bit wider here and there should be a symmetry between the ornaments. So this is the finished necklace. I hope you like the necklace, I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching. I will show you how to make a toggle clasp necklace uh, using a metal charm, some beads, I will use coral and turquoise beads, a metal clasp of course, toggle clasp, and I will also need some nylon cord, I have chosen this black nylon cord for the necklace, for the cord ends I uh, will use these spring ends, and some jump rings and the last finding that I will use is this eye pin. As tools I will use different pliers. I have a chain nose plier, a pair of chain nose pliers, a pair of cutting pliers and a pair of round nose pliers. The chain nose pliers are used for bending the wire and for opening and closing the jump rings. The cutting pliers are used for cutting the wire, whereas the round nose pliers, as you can see they are rounded here at the end, are used for creating loops, such as the loop on the eye pin. <coughs> and now uh, and uh, I forgot to tell you, I will also use this uh, jump ring opener for my jump rings. Uh, now that we have talked about the tools, the findings, the beads uh, that we need for this um, toggle necklace, toggle clasp necklace, let's begin making the necklace. Um, let's now create the necklace. I will take the nylon cord and I will take one of these cord ends and I will put the cord end like this on my nylon cord to prevent the nylon cord from uh, coming out of my um, Uh, cord end, I will grab the um, end of this spring cord end and press on this spring end here. 
like this. And as you can see, the end of this spring cord end is pressing on my nylon cord. I will grab the end of this cord here, of the, of the spring cord end, and I will lift the last ring of my spring cord end like this, so that I can attach the jump ring. Now, let's take one of those jump rings. And I will open the jump ring, grabbing it with the pliers and with the jump ring opener, like this. And as you can see, I have opened the jump ring. Now, I will put the cord end on this jump ring and I will also take half of the toggle clasp and also put it on my jump ring. Let's open the jump ring a bit more. Like this. And now let's close the jump ring using the same tools. I will take another pair of pliers and grab the jump ring like this. So for opening and closing the jump rings you can use either two pairs of pliers like this or a pair of pliers and a jump ring opener like this. So um, as you can see one end of my necklace is ready, so this part of the toggle clasp has been attached to the cord. And now we have this other end of the uh, clasp. Again, I will take the spring cord end and put it on the black nylon cord, as you can see. And um, I will press on the end of this spring cord end. This way. So that the nylon cord doesn't come out anymore since the end of this spring cord end is pressing on the nylon cord. Again, I will lift the last ring this way with the pliers and let's attach the other end of the toggle clasp. I will open the jump ring like this. I will put the jump ring on the cord end here and the toggle clasp too. I will grab the jump ring and close it like this and I also attached the other end of the toggle clasp and now let's see if I can close the necklace like this so this toggle clasp will be worn uh, in front 
on the neck in front, in the front part, on the front part of the neck. And now let's add the ornaments. So our necklace with the toggle clasp is ready. Now the next step is to create the ornamentation of the Uh, of the uh, necklace. So as you can see I took a, an eye pin and I put my beads, two turquoise beads and a coral bead on my eye pin. And now let's see how long the pin should be. So I will cut a little bit of this pin like this with the cutting pliers like this. this way and now I will bend this pin and I will make sure that the two loops will be in the same plane so I will leave a bit about a millimeter space between the last bead and the place where I will bend my pin so that the last bead does not break and now I will bend to 90 degrees my pin as you can see I bent the pin to 90 degrees and now I will take the round nose pliers and start creating the loop so I will grab the end of my pin and start rolling the pin uh, I will close the loop that I have created like this and as you can see I have a loop on both ends of my beads and the next step will be to attach the ornament so I will attach the feather um, a charm metal charm I will open the jump ring I will put the metal charm on my jump ring. I will also put the beads on my jump ring and I will close. And as you can see I have created the uh, decoration of my necklace. And now I will take the toggle clasp and um, I will attach the decoration to my toggle clasp so I will take the jump ring I will open it and I will put the jump ring on the toggle clasp this way and I will also attach the uh, feather pendant with the beads and I will close my jump ring this way and now let's see what the finished necklace looks like Let's put the tools away. So this is the front part of my necklace. Let's see from a distance what my necklace looks like. 
So this will be a necklace around the neck. So it's not a long necklace. It's just around the neck, a short necklace. And this is what my necklace looks like. And this is the decoration dependent of the necklace. So I hope you liked this video. And I hope that you uh, like the uh, toggle clasp necklace.